There is excitement. There is, there is excitement in the house, I see. Well, I wanted to start today with a simple statement, very short. Here it is. You're still here. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. I'll tell you why. Because that reminds me of the story one day I'll teach about the people that came, the ten ones that Jesus healed. And almost no one came back to show what happened to them. We have become very ungrateful. We have become very selfish, self-centered. It's all about us, and I was sharing with my friends here about sometimes I can see, I can see when I preach and I sometimes look into somebody's eyes and I know they're not coming back. <laughs> they just got offended. They just got offended. That's why it fascinates me that you're still here. Why is that? Because we are in the middle of sifting. We are in the middle of purification process. We are in the middle of the fire. So if you're still here, you are truly the remnant that God is rising up. All my Christian life, I have been told that I should change my language, that I should be more politically correct, that I should be more compassionate and more loving. And, and they will come back to me all my Christian life that I'm just doing everything wrong. And then I go back to the Bible. And then I read the words of the biggest offender of all, Jesus Christ himself. And I'm thinking, I have to up the game. I am so far behind. I am so far behind. My God, he used the language that was the most offensive ever. Let me just say a few examples. I've never called you whitewashed tomb. <laughs> I never called you a brood of vipers. Foxes. Do you understand that when he said that to the Jewish people, that you are whitewashed tombs, it was the biggest offense Ever. I'll tell you why. Because the Jewish people could not touch dead body. If they touch anything that was dead or any clothes or they had to go through the process of purification, he says, you're dead bodies. You're filled with bonds. You are unclean. That's what he was saying. He was not just calling them names. I have been for the past few days since I did my press conference outside of the snake's office, Tyler Chandra, <laughs> the so-called minister of injustice. He knew we are coming, but we are not hiding, right? So we are not hiding, we have nothing to hide. They are, they are the thieves, they are the bloody murderers, they are hiding. We have nothing to hide. So they knew we are coming, and the moment we showed up, they were masked bandits waiting for us. And even though it's a public property, even though we pay our money, I pay, you pay, if you pay taxes, I hope you do. Not because we like it, it's just, that's what God tells us to do. 
to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. I do pay taxes, believe it or not. I hate every moment of it. <laughs> I'm allowed to have my feelings, but I do pay the taxes. Yeah, I know. That's why you need to vote for me. You nail it. They were waiting for us, and immediately we were told that we're not allowed to do this here. It's private property, and I'm sick of hearing that. The moment it's designated for public use, it's public. The moment taxpayers are paying for it, it's public. That's right. I should have access to the elected official, especially when that elected official is murdering us. But of course, we know how the Nazi operate, and I made, according to some, a big, big mistake. I call those nice Gestapo people Gestapo. <laughs> and they were not very happy. And the people that watched the press conference were not very happy as well. So I got phone calls. And for a few days, they were doing everything in their power to tame the lion. Forget that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. I know you're a man of fate, but it's not going to happen. I am who I am. God raised yeah. me the way I am. And I will not play the political game. I'll not be juggling for you. I'm not going to kiss your butts. I'm not going to do all of the, the, the wonderful things that those professional career politicians are doing. I just refuse to do that. But if you want a good cleaning job, you got to call a good cleaner with a big, big, powerful plunger. If that's what you're looking for, I'm your man. Amen. So I did. I did the press conference, and believe it or not, four police cruisers showed up as well. Wow. I never knew I'm so dangerous. Because I knew that if I knew how dangerous I am, I would hire a bodyguard for myself. Just to protect myself. Anyway, they were actually very nice. And when I see officers doing their job, I don't call them names. I actually... I. I, I I love the rule of law, believe it or not. I don't speed, I don't break the law. And if, when I see officers of the law, the peace officers doing the job, I thank them for it. They came, they were very respectful, they just, they were called, so they acted upon that call and they wanted to come and see what's going on. And there was no breaking of any law, so they left. And we thanked them for their service. But there are some people that, are not used to biblical standards. Let me put it even a little bit further. Majority of Christians are not used to biblical standards. I believe that if Jesus was to show up today, he would be kicked out, arrested, and sent to a psych ward just for simply using wrong clothes or, or saying words that are unacceptable for some of those Christians. Also, I had a number of conversations with politicians. Somehow they're crawling from their pit snakes, and you can see them sometimes in the grass. So they will come to me, and I'll have meetings with some of them. And Anyway, I had a conversation with the mayor, and not Calgary mayor, another mayor, and that gentleman was really offended. He was really offended because I called him out. Three gentlemen were charged with mischief over 5,000. and They're facing up to 10 years of imprisonment, just like me, for simply standing for the rights. And that mayor, instead of standing for his counselor, one politician was charged as well. Instead of standing for him, he threw him under the bus publicly. And he's a Christian. He claims to be a Christian. So he texts me, he says, well, what I did was unchristian because I call him out. He says, first, you should meet with me and talk to me. I said, well, you did that publicly to the CBC and all the other Gestapo propaganda machinery. So I'm doing it publicly unless you repent. 
unless you go publicly and say, I apologize for what I said. If you do that, I'll be standing with you and I will be singing praises for you. Because we need good politicians. We need politicians to actually do what we elected them to do. Well, the conversation was going on for a long time and it ended and just simply putting the end results, I'm not his best friend. <laughs> so anyway, I want to continue today on a subject that has caused me a lot of grief, the seven mountains. Amen. They have been hammering me left and right, those different individuals. You see, here is why I believe that the enemy is afraid. I think the, F, the enemy is terrified that Christians are actually looking into positioning themselves into those different spheres of influence. Right. And I think that's why the attack is so heavy, because the devil is afraid. Imagine a good, godly woman as a teacher, a good, godly man as a politician or a police officer, or a judge. Can you imagine for a change if we actually had righteous judges that actually followed the law? Amen. Wow, what a difference that would make. So when we're talking about let's influence, let's take, let's bring their light to the darkness, the enemy is terrified and the enemy is pushing. That's why I am even more impressed that you're still here. Because I know this is a very crucial time. When God is separating the sheep from the goats and the sheep from the wolves. And only the real deal will remain. But I'll tell you, if you survive, some of you may not survive. But if you survive this process of purification, you will be mightily used. Amen. You will be used by God. God is already using us. God is already using us, but I'm telling you. When we go through that fire, we're going to be used even more right. in a more powerful way. Let's open our Bibles to Roman, Romans 1, 18. Romans 1 and 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Let's just focus on this, on this statement. Who suppress? The truth. Is that not what we're observing right now? The suppression of the truth, censorship, deplatforming, attacks on anyone, anyone, anyone that dares to preach the truth. Because there are people out there that they want to suppress the truth. And how do they do it? By their wickedness. In other words, we have forgotten what is the job of the church to bring the light. Therefore, darkness took over. And what darkness do, what, what is darkness doing? It's bringing wickedness. And by their wickedness, they're doing everything in their power to suppress the truth. That is why it is so important to be involved, active, going, not staying. This is not the time for silence. It is a time of roaring. Amen. <laughs> People are perishing, people are dying, and, and, and again, Brenda just shared the sad story. While I was going to Camrose, and by the way, we were, we were thinking there's going to be maybe 20 people showing up, you know, small venue, and, but I still love to talk to people. It was packed house, standing room only. They had to add, and they kept adding chairs. So that tells me. That tells me something is going on. Something is on the move. God is on the move. More and more people's eyes are being opened and they understand the mistake that we have been doing for the past five million years. If we were here for that long. For 40 years, 50 years in Canada alone, revolving door. Let's vote for the lesser evil. Let's vote for a lesser evil because NDP will get in. Let's vote for a snake so the viper will not take over. And look at us today. People are dying. They're hurting. And people are looking for someone, anyone, that can lead them out of that hurting stage, out of that misery. 
Is there hope anywhere? They're looking for the church and the church failed them. They're looking for the pastors and the pastors became cowards. So they're looking anywhere. And anyone that will rise up and bring that light, they will follow. So we got to... We got to be ready for that because we don't want them to go to the enemy. So the enemy will destroy them, will lead them into destruction. That's why I'm always saddened by the young people. They, they love to go and party and rave parties and all kinds of different things. I call them the high heels. People love, especially young people, they love to conquer something. They, don't want, they want to do something. And they want to do something crazy. And the enemy is giving that to them. The enemy is really giving them crazy things to conquer, crazy things to do. How about us, the church? Let's give them crazy things to do as well. Let's give them something to conquer. Let's give them something to possess, something to fight for. You see, they're full of energy. They want to do something. And what do we do? We keep them in our pews. And we're telling them, when I'm dead, you can take over. Well, I don't want to wait 50 years until you die. I want to do something now. Amen. Because in 50 years' time, I, may, I will not have as much energy as I have right now. That's why we have to use the young people today, yeah. now. Give yeah. them something to do. That's why I encourage you to come to street church three times a week. It's your opportunity to fight for one soul. And then when you're done, fight for another one. And keep fighting, keep feeding the poor, keep preaching, keep praying, keep doing something. You see, don't you know that street church is located at the gates of the city? The gates over there, they were brought, if I remember, from Scotland. Some people decided that the Olympic Plaza, the very place that street church is, is going to be the gates to the city, in front of City Hall. And God has given it to us. So the young people come and fight, come and stand up at the gates of the city and conquer, conquer this land. Here is another thing you can do. We need boots on the ground. We need people to start door knocking and letting people know that there's another option, that they don't have to be afraid of the NDP or liberals. Therefore, they feel forced to vote for the UCP traitors. But now is another option. But they don't know. Many people do not know that there is actually a tangible another option. Here is your high heels. Here is your place where you can go with a few other people and you can door knock and tell them, hey, have you heard? Have you heard about this party? Have you heard that there is another option? Have you heard that you don't have to vote for snakes, scorpions, and vipers anymore. That there are some lions around that want to bring back sanity into your land. They're looking for answers. People are looking for answers. You, the church, you have the answers. The, the truth is suppressed, but God has us here for a purpose, for a reason. This is why he said in Matthew 28, 19, Matthew 28, 19, therefore go. Did he say stay? He says go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them, doing what? Teaching them to obey everything, to do what? Obey when you feel like it, when the weather is nice, when the people look at you the right way, and they smile. No. Obey everything I have commanded you. It was not a suggestion. It was that a suggestion? Commanded you. And surely I am with you always. In other words, he says, do what I've told you to do, and I got your back covered. That's exactly what he's saying. I, will, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we are to make disciples. That means we are commanded to educate and to influence everything and everyone that we can. 
Every sphere is to hear the truth. And you are that trumpet. Let's go to Romans 1. Again, verse 19. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, to those people that suppress the truth, because God has made it plain to them. In other words, don't kid yourself. They know what they're doing. In other words, God says, I have told them not to do it. They're doing it willfully. They know what they're doing. They know that they're hurting people. They know that their people are dying and they're still pushing. They're pushing their agenda. I was just told that the province of Alberta received billions of dollars from Pfizer to push this agenda. Billions of dollars. It's all about money. And, and, and so many times I have told you so. You're just a social insurance number to them. You, don't, you mean nothing. If you live or you die, I'm sorry, but they don't care about your dad. They don't care. They will not even blink an eye. They will not even remember him drinking their coffee or whiskey in a sky palace. They don't care. It's all about power, money, prestige for them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that the people are without excuse. Yesterday, I had a meeting with a politician, and he was doing everything in his power to excuse the behavior of some of those cats. And I said, stop it. Just stop it. They did what they did, and they know what they're doing. The guilty as charged. The guilty as charged. So let, let, let me go back a little bit to my use of words. Nazis. It robs Canadian mind, Canadian ears in the wrong way. Well, who is a Nazi? A Nazi is a member of nationalistic, socialistic, fascist organization that believes you are slaves and they are the pharaohs. What is a Gestapo? You know, you've heard, you've seen the movies and Gestapo, Gestapo here, Gestapo there. What that even means? And I try to explain it to people, and I have to because people do not know history. Gestapo simply means a political police. That's what it is. Nothing more into it. It's a political police. Is that not what we have right now? Yes. Political police? Right. The Charter of Rights out the window. The Criminal Code of Canada out the window. The Human Rights out the window. International Rights out the window. Nuremberg Code out the window. We have political police and they are working not for you and me. They're working for politicians. That's why they're political police. So when I call them Gestapo, I'm simply saying what you're doing has nothing to do with law and order. Right. You're just a personal muscle, like mafia, for the elected or unelected bureaucrats. That's what it simply means. And yet when I say it, always robs the nice Canadians in the wrong way. And I'm thinking to myself, they're more offended by me calling a bloody murder a murder, then they are offended at the murders that are doing this to us. And I find this fascinating. They're more offended at someone that says, this is bad, this is wrong. They're evil, wicked people. They're bloody murderers. They're acting like Nazis. They're acting like KGB. They're acting like Gestapo. And they're more offended at me pointing the problem than they are angry at the problem. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Verse 21. For although they knew God, they've heard about him because God reveals himself in creation, neither they glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise. <laughs> right now, my uh, revelation in life is the more diplomas are on your wall, the dumber you are. 
Maybe it's time to take some of those diplomas off your walls. And don't invite me for dinner. If I see the diplomas, I might say something that will offend you. I probably would. They think they're wise, those cannies of today, those hinchas, the so-called doctors, Toms. But the problem is they don't even know if they're men or female. <laughs> is that not fascinating? They got all those diplomas and they're so educated and they're professor this and professor that. And they still believe that when you bring two cows, you can have a calf. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, how low we have fallen. They claim to be wise. They have become fools. <laughs> so I love that. I love the word of God. It's so awesome. Although they claim to be wise, they have become fools. And exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being. And birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity. For the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned unnatural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. <clears throat> one of the one of the wannabe premiers just a few weeks ago marched with those types of individuals on the streets of our city here in Calgary proudly. And that individual is looked upon as the savior of Alberta. And you know who I'm talking about. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a deprived, deprived mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They're full of envy, murder. They're full of what? Murder. Strife, deceit, and malice. They're gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, so they know that. By the way, my best friend, the premier of Alberta, Jason Kenney, <laughs> he goes to church every Sunday here in Inglewood. Maybe one day you can visit him and just say hi. Say hi from his best friend out of Alaska. <laughs> he goes to church and he worships the same God he claims. Can you imagine? Can you imagine those people going to church and perhaps singing the same songs we are singing? And they're lifting their filthy, bloody hands <coughs> towards heaven. And they're claiming that they are serving God that is holy and righteous, a God of life. While at the same time, they're murdering children, they're murdering citizens. And I'm thinking to myself, how you can reconcile those two? How can you look in a mirror? How can you even go to a church and do this? They've lost souls. They've lost the ability even to understand how evil and wicked they are. God has given them into their deprived mind. So they know that the decrees of God and they know that who does such a things deserve death. 
they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve. In other translation, it says they encourage others to practice the same sins. Is that not what we're seeing left and right? They do things that a man should never, ever do, and they do them knowing this is wrong, and they encourage others to do the same thing. And what's more evil is that they are depriving our youngsters. Yeah. Our youngsters. That's right. So now the question is very simple. Do you want to be ruled, influenced by shameful lusts that have abundant natural relations? Do you want to be ruled by those that are greedy, without mercy, evil, deceitful, arrogant, and God-hating? Do you want to be ruled by those types of individuals? They have been influencing the world, I would say, for far too long. It is time for the church to start obeying God and influencing people around us with God's truth. And I, again, like I said at the very beginning, that's why I believe there is such a heavy attack on anyone, anyone that is on the side of God that wants to influence some or all of those seven mountains of influence. We even had people in our church that left because of it, and they're doing videos opposing the message. And I'm shaking my head and I'm thinking, oh, how low you have fallen. How low. Remember last week I asked you a question, do you want a pedophile to rule over you? Do you want... No thanks, that's a good answer. Very polite and very Canadian. I would use different words. But you see, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I rob people in the wrong way. Because I would use a totally different words and probably upset a lot of people. So I want to talk today about Mountain Six. I hear there's an interesting one, media, communication, the news. The media is the main means of mass communication that reaches a large audience, whether written, broadcast, or spoken, like television, radio, newspapers, magazines, internet, movies, advertisement, and so forth. So now, again, the question is, who do you want, who do you want to be in the media? Do you want pathological liars like we have right now? Do you want bloody murderers that will keep murdering because now they have audience that they can forward their bloody ideas? Or you want someone that preaches the truth through those means of communication? Truth. 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 Jesus. It is significant force that has the capacity to create the cultures that always influences and defines the character of a people geographically. In other words, I would submit to you that we are to use anything and everything that is at our disposal to bring forth the truth. I don't care if it's Facebook, some call it fascist book, whatever. If we're still there, let's use it. If you're still on YouTube, use it. If you're on Rumble, use it. If you have power in, in the middle of newspapers, use it. If you're in city hall, use it. Whatever God is giving you at this moment, he's giving you as a gift so now you can forward the truth in the middle of the lie. And here is what I know about the truth. Truth stands like a pillar on its own. Truth doesn't need to be supported. It doesn't need anything. Truth stands on its own. It's always the lie that needs more manipulation, misinformation, disinformation, more lies. And usually a lie has to be supported by terror and fear. Is that not what we have been observing in the past few years? The truth was supported by terrorizing us. And if you dare to say, well, wait a second, that's not what it's... 
Here, you were kicked out and called xenophobe. White. You were called white supremacist. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Do you remember one time we had a, we had a rally outside of the city hall and I was standing there with a black man. We both were called racist and white supremacist <laughs> by the mainstream media. Can you believe it, how blind they are? Wow. Right, so I mean, nothing makes sense because, because like my wife always says, you, you're looking for a reason. You're looking for a logic with a pathological liar, with the devil. You can't reason with the liar. He knows what he's doing. The media is a stronghold that influences and controls the minds of people. And as much as I don't like that, it, it is the truth. People are watching stupid CBC 24 hours a day, and then they are wondering why they're brainless. Because the CBC sucks your brain cells out of your head. I have figured that out. Actually, if you pay attention, when people watch CBC, you can see the gray hair flying. You cannot prove that scientifically, but I know it's the truth. Because afterwards, after 10 years or 15 years of watching CBC, you try to do talk to them like, meh. <laughs> There's nothing left. There's nothing left. So it must be happening that way. It just flies away. The works of darkness, Illuminati, wickedness, idolatry, heresies, sexual immoralities, and abominable acts such as homosexual marriages, lesbianism, witchcraft, is being widely promoted and accepted as a culture, and even praised and glamorized on movies, television, social medias, and so forth. So here is our own story from this church. You know they did a mini movie here in this church? My brother David was actually one of the actors. And they sent it to the, to the film festivals. And the first question was, are there any homosexuals in the movie? No. Therefore, we cannot accept this. So if you don't have their agenda in whatever you're doing, you will not even make it to the big screen. You, you don't, don't even waste your time. That's how bad it is. If you're not promoting the woke, evil, wicked culture, don't even waste your time with them. Yesterday, a man said to me, well, don't you want the mainstream media to cover you? No. Nah. I don't care if they cover me or not. Amen. You see, I don't care if the devil speaks about me or not. But I do care about God's media. And he can use me as a trumpet that the whole world will hear it again. Right. Didn't he do it last year? The whole world heard about this trumpet that just said to the evil, get out. Right. He can do it again if that's what he wants. He can do it again. Yeah. Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians 2.2. 2. Wherein in the time past you walked according to the course of this war, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worked, works in the children of disobedience. In other words, God is saying you used to be just like them, but you were redeemed, you were saved. Now you came from darkness to light. But they are working for the prince of the air. And they're forwarding his lies. So media is air waves. And it is, it is a spirit. Air is symbolic of the spirit. Satan is known as the prince of the power of the air, the media. The spirit that controls people to make them walk in disobedience. Satan is a ruler and authority of the air, airwaves. That's why it's so important to bring, bring the truth. Because here is what happens. When you bring the truth, the lie collapses automatically. The same way when you bring the light to the room, 
the darkness has no choice. It has to go. There is no negotiate. Have you ever seen light negotiating with the darkness? You go to your room, to your house during the night hours, and you use your switch, and there is like wrestling happening. The darkness is wrestling with the, with the light and says, no, no, I want to be in darkness. No, it's an automatic defeat. The light shows up. The darkness has no choice. It has to go. That's how the church is supposed to be. Amen. When we show up, just us showing up should be enough for the darkness to freak out. So the media continues to be the platform to promote the dark side of the kingdom of darkness and to keep people captive to the course of this world. While the women went on their way, some of the soldiers guarding the tomb, tomb went back to the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. The chief priests met with the elders and made their plan. That's Matthew, by the way, Matthew 28, 11. Matthew 28, 11 to 15. Here's a very interesting story. They are making a deal with the people. They're, they made their plans. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said this to them. You are to say that his disciples came during the night and stole his body while you were asleep. It sounds like our news. Every day. They got money from Trudeau Castro, and they're just giving you the lie every single day. Because they were paid to do that. Just like those soldiers were paid to lie. Even though they saw the truth, they knew the truth, but they received money to willfully lie. Our Canadian mainstream media received billions of dollars to lie to us and people still watch that garbage I don't get it I don't understand so they received the money you are to say that his disciples came during the night and stole his body while you were asleep and if the governor should hear of this we will convince him that you are innocent in other words you lie, you broke the law, but we will cover you back. Is that not what is happening right now? They're covering their backs. They're lying for each other, covering the backs, their backs, and the money is at the center of this affair. It's all about money. The Calgary police officers took the money. The sheriffs, they took the money. The Alberta's politicians, they took the money. The judges, they took the money. The nurses and the doctors, they took the money. And did what they were told to do. I don't think there is, there is any lower place in hell for someone that sells another human being for money. I truly believe that's the lowest of the low. When you looked at another human being and you are selling him or children or anybody else for a silver coin. I don't think there is anything worse than that. Because even abortion is being done for money. Money is at the center of murdering the innocent children. So I believe that there is a special place in hell for those people. I believe that those doctors, those nurses, those politicians, those judges, those police officers, all of those people that did take the money, knowingly, to murder you, and to murder your children, and to murder your father and others, I think the horror for them will be like nothing else in hell. And so that is the report spread around by the Jews to this very day. In other words, the propaganda did work. 
the chief priests, and, and today, uh, you know, I'm sure you have observed that when you're walking around and you still see, you still see people muzzled like dogs in plus 30, and they're alone, and they are so terrified that they will infect themselves, that they are protecting themselves from themselves, and they truly think that science, and I'm just shaking my head, my, my, my wife is sick. Because when I see them, I just can't help it. Masked monkeys. We are surrounded by masked monkeys. Wow. What happened to the gray cell? Now you know what happened to the gray cell. They don't have any. The CBC took it. The chief priests and the religious sects stood council and gave a large sum of money in. and bribed the soldiers which is sufficient to propagate a false report until this day, to deny the truth about Jesus Christ, to deny the truth about what really is happening around us and to our loved ones, unknown causes of death. Death, young adult death syndrome, I think it's called now. We don't know what's happening. Or you bloody murders you. Of course you know what's happening. But to admit... To admit for them that this is related to the remedy would mean that they will have to admit that they have blood on their hands. And you have to understand that for a human being to admit I have committed such an atrocious act is like saying by the Gestapo and SS and the Nazis before I am a bloody murderer, and I have wiped out 25 million human beings by obeying orders, by just following orders. And a human nature is fascinating, actually, because people prefer to live in a denial. They will be denying the facts. They will be denying the truth in order to protect themselves and to finally bow and admit I was wrong. I can live with a murderer that repents and comes back to God and says, I've done wrong. God, I don't know what else to do, but your blood is, is good enough to wash me. I, I can accept that. But a bloody liar, a bloody denier, and a murderer that keeps murdering, there is no hope for those people. Only hell. They denied Christ, our Lord and Savior, that rose from the dead on the third day, and that he's alive for a silver coin. Billions of dollars is invested in media to control the airwaves, to propagate lies and false reports. Because anything that can be on the media will be accepted by the people and be sold to them. Do not watch Canadian media unless you're like me. Sometimes I will watch, I will read the articles just to know what the propaganda is saying. So I can be in a scoop, but I can know, okay, they are pushing this direction. They're bloody liars. But I just do not understand people that are promoting or following the news and are actually believing what they're being told. So that is, does this matter to us as a church that this mountain of media and communication is also available to us in many ways? And we can influence this mountain of media through a large sum of money if we invest to propagate the gospel of the kingdom of God through the right channels. Does this matter that we get involved in the media? So you have a liar that keeps lying. And then you have a good man that says, I don't want to interfere with his lying business. Is that a good man or a bad man? Let me suggest to you that we have become very bad for a very long time. We didn't want to get splashed with the manure. We said that's not our job. This is too dirty. We don't want to get involved. Say that to the garbage collector. Say that to the person that picks up your garbage. No, 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 don't come here. This is too dirty. It's a too dirty of a job, and you should not be involved in darkness. 
You should only be involved in clean bins. You know what will happen to your house? I'll tell you what will happen. You will be eaten by disease. Rats, rats would be dining with you and on you. Is that not what we did? Is that not what we did? We vilified the garbage collectors. We vilified those that were cleaning our houses. And now we're complaining that this stinks, that it's rotten to the core, that it's so angry, this human manure, that it feels like you're in the middle of a toilet after someone did something unthinkable. I know now your imagination is flying left and right. Stop it. Stop it. We have to get involved. We have to become the cleaners. As uncomfortable as this job might be, and as uh, ungrateful some of the people are or will be for the garbage collectors. Oh, you stink. Yeah, because I was around your stinky garbage. So if I stink, you stink also, because it's your garbage. We need to clean the house. Yeah. And we need yeah. people that are willing to clean the house. We need people that are, are willing to say things the way they are, without sugarcoating, without wrapping it in a nice, beautiful, Christmassy boxes. Because then when you open the box, oh my God, you got a heart attack when you see what you actually received. By the way, I'm not giving you any bad ideas for Christmas, for me, okay? I will use force against you if it needs to be. <laughs> to say that we should stay away from the places of influence is, is a lie that has been destroying our loved ones from the very beginning. And I say, for the first time, maybe in a long time, God has given us an opportunity to influence the influencers, to influence every mountain of influence, to be able to at least clean a little bit, by God's grace, all the places that not many people want to even touch. Education system, we talked about that last week, what they do to our youngsters. We talked about religion. Oh my God, religion needs to be clean. Yesterday I had a lunch with the counselor. <laughs> I don't know, my wife says, don't talk about the churches, they will hate you even more. I can't help it. I can't help it. He shared with me a story that broke my heart. He says, I was a pastor in a mega church here in, in Red Deer. I was a pastor and <sighs> And they, because of this craziness, they kicked me out. They kicked me out and they said that I'm not allowed to start another church ever. That they said that he signed a contract that states that he's not allowed to start a church until the day he dies. And I'm thinking, my God, someone actually came with that idea. Another pastor that said to another human being, you cannot be a pastor ever if you leave this church like mafia, like Cosa Nostra. And you cannot start a church while my Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, make disciples. When two or three are gathered, it's a church already. And those people, this board of directors from pit of hell, is telling this man, you're not allowed to preach the gospel anymore until the day you die. Why? Because you were kicked out from our denomination, from our church. Wow. I love this man because the first thing he did, he opened the church. <laughs> he opened the church. And I joked with him, I said, I don't know if, uh, if it's any valuable to you, but you got my blessing. <laughs> he doesn't need the mega church's blessing. And he's striving, his church is packed. He's a good man. And he did not obey the devil. He, wanted to obey God, and God is blessing him left and right. I love those people. They're amazing. They are the heroes, heroes of faith. And the cloud of witnesses is watching for more heroes to rise up. 
Look what is happening. You know how many times I was told that a church cannot be politically involved? How many times I was told, David, remember? Well, I don't know where's my brother. I remember one time we went to the church and they had a prayer meeting for the candidates in the upcoming election. The only candidate that showed up was my brother. And he says, well, this is a meeting to pray for me. Can I at least thank you for the prayers? No, you're not allowed. We, we cannot be political. You cannot come and say, but this is a meeting for me and others like me, and I'm the only one that showed up. Can I at least have a minute to tell people what I stand for, that I'm a born-again Christian and they're actually praying for me? No, you're not allowed to do that. And the security showed up and started to physically try to move him out of the church. And the meeting was for him. That's how low we have fallen. Yesterday I also learned that Travis Taves, that pathological snake that wants to be your next premier, the very one that partied with another viper, Jason Kenney, the man that calls himself a premier. So he partied, breaking the rules and regulations, as you remember, and that man wants to, your he wants to be your next premier. And the pastors of mega churches endorsed him publicly, gave him the pulpit to speak during this race, and they put their, his pictures all around the churches to promote him. Why? Because he goes to Alliance Church, and he is very wealthy. His family is a crazy wealth. They're multi-multi-millionaires. So the church figured it out if he's elected. Judas's money are coming. The silver coins are going to come to us. That's how low we have fallen. Very low. Well, but there is hope. Because as you remember, I was impressed that you're still here. I'm actually impressed that no one walked out of the room. So you're still here. There is hope for you. And, um, and there is hope for all of us. Because I truly believe that God is raising a totally new breed of church. Amen. A totally different... <laughs> she is raising a totally different breed of animals, if you will. Because we talked about vipers, scorpions, and all those different things. I believe that he's raising up lions and lionesses. From the mindset, I'm just a sheep. And it's fascinating, it's amazing. So why do we waste our energy and time fighting against one another? Either on the media or social networks. And give ourselves to foolishness. When we can utilize that platform and channel our energy for Christ and His kingdom. Instead... Instead, instead of attacking each other and saying, I don't like the way you greeted me today, and you didn't smile like you. You are a perfect example. You don't smile a lot. Um, yeah, you, you. Yeah. And that reminds me of a story. I had this guy sitting in the front, and he was giving me the same face you're giving me today. Like... And I'm thinking, this guy is going to kill me. I'm gone. I'm as good as gone. Like, my soul, Lord, into thy hands. And he's sitting like, like, like really, he means business. I'm looking at his hands. Does he have, does he have any weapon on him? Like, like very intensely. Like, like, like a pit bull. Like the pit bull we saw, you know? What a face. You never forget that face. Like, wow, Mark is his name. My God, help us. Help us with all those marks. Anyway, he's sitting right there and he's giving me this intense, like, Ooh, I'm going to murder you just in a second. I just want to wait until you're done whatever you have to say. That's your last words. And boom. And then when I said, Amen, he jumps and I said, that's it. Here I come, Lord. <laughs> and he runs to me and he gives me a hug and says, this was the best sermon ever. <laughs> so... In other words, 
In other words, don't be fooled. Some people just have a face like that. <laughs> Look at my face. People say I'm always angry with my eyes. No, that's how I smile. So next time you see my eyes, it's like this guy is smiling to me. Church, be blessed. I'm so excited. Something amazing is going to happen. Something amazing is already happening. The lie is being exposed left and right. More and more people are rising up. God. God is still sitting on a throne. He's faithful. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Get excited. Start running. Never stop. And I believe that we can pull this off. I truly believe by what I hear left and right, there are people like you and me sick and tired of the lie. And they finally want the truth. Let's go out there and give them, let's give them the truth. Because the Bible says, the truth shall set the captives free. Be blessed. Yeah.